Hello everybody, I'm here to show you one of the most famous uh, coach in the world, Tony Robbins. In order to practice, okay, I'm going to show you this video and this opportunity, okay? So, let's do it. Did you finish your poster? Well, we were to what, four? Yeah. yeah. Did you, were, you guys You were we, still up. How long Yeah, did you we stay? were still up. Um, I think we went to bed about 4.30. What I realized is that I always thought that I had to achieve things in order to feel good. You know, I had to be first place. I had to be the best. And after winning a TV show three times, I'm looking at these three trophies in my apartment. I was kind of like, OK, well, now what? Shoot, I thought this was going to bring me hmm. just, just long lasting joy. I had someone run up to me yesterday. He had bought a couple of my books. And he's like, you're here? Why would you be here? I said, are you kidding me? I said, you're this. And I said, yeah, but that, we all have our own stuff. Don't, don't let anything, accomplishments, yeah. don't change who we are in here. And we all need to fix that. Mm -hmm. how, many, how many successful people end their lives or yeah. drink or do drugs because they can't figure it out? My biggest thing is security, right? So I never feel safe to be able to be myself. And by the way, harder when you're someone on camera. This time at Date with Destiny, I was like, I looked at you, my partner, and I said, oh my God, it just hit me. <laughs> it hit me why we're all able to transform. And it's because we're in a safe place. Tony just gives you the tools to strip off the layers of like what you've built up to keep you strong, right? Yep. And so to me, this event is just literally like unmasking so many layers of yeah. everything. How many of you came to this room, invested significant money to get here, not just the seminar, the flight, the time? How many got something at home that needs to be managed? You got people managing it, whether it be businesses or family or something of that nature. You made big investments to be here, and I don't take that lightly, as I'm sure you know. I want to deliver times 100 of what you expect. For me to do that, though, I got to know what you're after. And I believe I know what you're after. There's two primary things that people are after. They either want to change a behavior, because they think, if I can change that, I can get what I want, or they want to change how they feel. They want to change how they, they want to be less angry, they want to be more happy, they want more passion, they want to get out of this depression, or they want to stop smoking, they want to lose weight, they want to learn to influence people more effectively, they want to make more money. Those are behaviors, the first one are emotions. Most of you, if I said, if I walked up right now, and I said, uh, tell me, what do you want? What do you want? First thing comes to your mind. What do you really want? You guys should be prepared because I could strike at any moment. Just wake the fuck up. I'm coming. I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you wherever you are in the room. I'm coming for you. Be prepared. It could happen at any moment. I wasn't prepared. What do you want? Uh, First gut reaction. What do you want? Now, by the way, the fact that she doesn't even know what she wants tells me a little about the model of her world. She thinks she's supposed to have the right answer. That shit's gonna go within about 48 hours, perhaps 24, could be two minutes, you have to decide. Meanwhile, tell me the fucking answer. Um, what do you want? Uh, I'm gonna say happiness, but... Okay, good, I'm just, uh, wanna, but what, but what? I wanna say I wanna be on time. <laughs> you wanna be what? On time. You wanna be on time? Yes. Okay, that's fascinating. <laughs> yes. My daughter's in the other room and she's loving every second of this. She's day. loving this. Um, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been taking these drugs? <laughs> yeah, this is who I am. I'm hesitant and I'm late and indecisive. I'm but I'm hesitant? really a nice person. Wait a second, really I'm nice hesitant, person. I'm late, and I'm what? Indecisive. Indecisive. Wow. Come out here now. Uh oh. Now. Okay, I'm coming. Right now. I'm here. <laughs> Thank you. Heels today. So the fact that you're not on time, is that because you like to rebel against the fact that you don't have to do what someone wanted you to do? Well, yeah, I can be rebellious. But, can as, be rebellious. I, I'm, but as we're saying this, I, I just told you my daughter's here. I want her to know that I'm not rebelling against her. She's crazy, prompt, needs to be on time, control freak, and I'm making her late and she doesn't like it. Although Chelsea's been very patient with me. <laughs> um, so you've become your daughter's daughter. 
You're very scared. How will she punish you? Oh, no. She just freaks out, and I just don't. Oh, so that's how she punishes you. She freaks out. Okay, yeah. <laughs> come on over here. Chelsea, come on over. Chelsea, you're frustrated with her a little bit. Is that true? Uh, yes. Yeah. What are you frustrated about? Um, a lot of things. Well, this is your moment. <laughs> um, well, this morning we left when we were supposed to be here. Yeah, you left when you were supposed to be here. Yeah, we left the hotel. That fucking whore. <laughs> is that really fucking true? You left when you were supposed to be here? What a bitch. <laughs> I hate, I hate to be late. I hate to be late. Really? I never would have gathered that. <laughs> I see. Why didn't you just come yourself? Because I drove her. Well, couldn't you get another car? Oh, no, I drove her. Like, yeah, we have one car. Yeah, couldn't you get her another car? Couldn't you got a cab or an Uber? Oh, well, because I care about her. Oh, you do? Like, like I it really want... It feels like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You care about her I as long as she doesn't interfere with your system. No. Um, this is this is gonna sound really bad, but because you know it's we're here. It's probably because it is. But go ahead. All right. <laughs> I I hate that I love her. Yes, I can feel that. I I do. I. I hate that I care about her. I hate that I love her. And why is that? Because she's the biggest cause of pain in my life. <laughs> and how's that? She just is. Like, I wake up and it's a fight. I wake up and it's always a fight. A fight about what? Everything and anything. Yeah. Anything. Now there's multiple things going on here. When there's no hierarchy, things break down. And you could say, I don't think it should be that way, and you can't all you want, but that's like saying, I don't think there should be gravity. There is a certain hierarchy that structurally allows relationships to work. If you take that hierarchy out, things will be fucked up. When you are no longer in charge of your family, your family will start to disintegrate. And it may be because you feel you fucked up or you beat yourself up. I'm sure she's beaten herself up so many times about so many things. She can't win at anything, even with herself. And the source of love, I believe, is right across from her. That's probably her biggest source of love. I doubt it's a man. Is it? No. <laughs> I'm not her spouse. I am not her spouse. But so, we have conversations. I was, I was asking her. <laughs> okay, but right now I've got to be in but, charge for a minute here. Yeah, uh, no, no, you're always in charge. Not now. Not with me. I'm not your fucking mother. <laughs> and the hair flipping shit won't work with me either. I'm not that kind of guy. <laughs> so the batting the eyes, the hair flipping, all that shit won't work with me. You want to be fucking real with me? I'll help your ass. But all the techniques you use, I'm not a stupid fucking boy. I'm a man. Don't try that shit with me. It won't work. I'll rip you open. You understand me? Yes. yes. There's three others in the house, too. What's that? There's other three others in the house, There's too. three others in the house? Yeah. More like this? No, they're all afraid of her. They're all afraid of her. They should be afraid of her. You've not put her in her place. She takes over. You can't have the whole kitchen. You can't have the whole kitchen. I need to be in here right now. I need to get in the bathroom you, right now. You let her fucking take over like I could have let her take over. I'm not going to let her fucking take over. I'll honor her. I'll respect her. I'll love her. But she's not going to fucking take over. Part of why she has a despise for you is because you don't show her any strength. But I try to keep peace in the house. It just, it's for... Heal! Peace, come out! Peace is not the goal for a family. Love, strength, growth has got to be the goal for the family, not fucking peace. Now, Carol, 
I look at your face and I finally fucking figured out that I know you from years ago. You lost a child, didn't you? Tell us that for a second. What happened? So everybody knows. Um, well, she was 16 and I think Chelsea was about eight. And she just got sick. And I brought her to the doctor in the hospital and they sent her home and she died. They sent her home saying she's fine. And she died. Um, that was tough. It was very, very difficult. I, I think the only reason that I, I continued to get up every day was because I had these other kids and um, somebody had contacted Tony and I came out and uh, went to date with Destiny and it was life changing. I had a new, so that's why I don't understand why I'm getting upset about it because I don't usually go there. <laughs> so who's really suffering right now? When I look, it depends on how I look at it. I look at it, I look at what she's missing out on, that, that her death shouldn't have happened, that she was mistreated and that's why she's gone. And she had so much to live for and she was such a giving person. What are your spiritual beliefs, Carol? My spiritual beliefs? Do you have any? I do. What do you believe? Well, I've always believed that... Uh, not, not what do you always believe, what do you believe? <laughs> that everything happens for a reason. And uh, I always believe that God never slams a door or allows a door to be slammed without opening a better one. So you're abandoning everything that you know? Just because you don't like the way it feels? If you knew my daughter, how could there be a better door? What's the consequence of the beliefs that you're now adapting? The consequence is I'll always be miserable. I'll always be unhappy. I'll okay, always well, doubt. So, okay, then sit down. And give that to your other four children. But I don't want no, to no, 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 give that to the other four children. They deserve their lives to be fucked over because you don't have the courage to tell yourself the truth about what you already believe. Fuck your other children over. Make them feel like they don't matter because their mom was always unhappy. They're not good enough to make her happy. Only the other child was. So the rest of their lives, they can live with insecurity and fear and hurt and sadness and a lack of love because you didn't step up when God gave you the chance. You want to do that to your children? You fucking do it. It's fine with me. It's not my kids. I feel like I didn't step up when, when she was dying. So, so, so because you didn't step up then, you're not going to step up for the rest of your life? No. You were suicidal yourself at the time. You held it together. But the message that she got was, I'm not as important as my sister. That's where her anger comes from. And to be fair to her, anyone would feel that way, even though it wasn't your intent. She was the first child, eight years difference, totally bonded, and unlike this bitch, she did the right things. She was obedient and shit, unlike this powerhouse that you really fucking need in your life. Your other daughter just was a nice match for you. Here's your mismatch, which God has put in your life so you could reclaim some of your strength that's missing. She's got all the fucking things you need, and she's got things that you don't think you need that she has, that you despise. I know that's not something that's easy to process or even believe. But I want you to know that what you went through at that time was not your mom's trauma alone. I get that. Yes, please. She told me, and it's not just once, that if I was to die, she would get over it because she actually liked Melissa. Yes. Now, what your mother said to you, I could slap her for. However, she blames herself for the death of your sister. If you could ever take in what that would feel like for a moment, then whatever she'd said, you would have a level of compassion that would change your own heart and would allow you to do the same thing for yourself. Because you also blame yourself that you're not what your mother would want to be. Part of you hates that she wants you to be a certain way, and part of you blames yourself that you aren't easier going or more sweet or more nice. And how the fuck would you? You had to figure out how to grow up really fucking quick. So what you really see is, you have done a very wonderful job in spite of what you think you've done, but I need you to apologize to your daughter for the things that she feels most hurt by, and I need you to do it from the deepest part of your heart so that she can feel it. And own the part where you failed so that she knows she's not crazy and she knows what your intent was. I think my intent actually was to protect myself. And I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hurt you. 
I really am sorry. I don't mean to hurt you. I love you very much. And I am so proud of you. You're going to be so much more successful than I've ever been. And I know it, and I've told everybody that. I tell you that all the time. Sorry that I yell at you, because it comes across like that I hate you, but it's just that I didn't like that I loved you so much, that I cared so much about you. And I'm really sorry if I make you feel anything less than that. But it feels nice to know that there's some nice things about me you like. <laughs> <laughs> Lights like this lead to love like arms. You like the spark in my bonfire heart. There you go. People like us. Oh. Sit down. I want seven people to tell these two people what you learned or appreciated from them. Stand and deliver if you choose. Raise your hand. five years I had no back pain last night I'm 23 and I had back pain so bad that like it was hard for me to walk sometimes and last night I literally just like laid down and I just rolled over and went to sleep and that was the first time that's happened to me in like years <laughs>